guys. Today we're discussing a rather serious topic related to altitude sickness. We're talking about high altitude cerebral edema or haze as we all know it. So for that I have with me Arjun Majumdar, the founder of India Hikes. He's seen several cases of haze himself. So he's going to throw some light on how to identify it and how to treat it. Let's talk to him. Hi Arjun, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you Swati. Arjun, um, haze seems to be uh, turning into a more common form of altitude sickness these days. How serious is it actually? See, uh, Swati, with this increasing number of trekkers going to our uh, mountains, Indian Himalayas or Nepal Himalayas, uh, the incidence of haze is rising. Uh, I am I'm seeing a lot of reports of uh, haze in our uh, country and haze is extremely serious. If you don't treat haze or if you don't take action, if you have got haze, it's going to turn fatal and it's going to turn fatal very quickly. Mm. It can happen in a matter of hours. Now, I do not know exactly how many hours it would be in your case. It could be three hours, it could be six hours. But for sure, if you don't treat or take action with haze, it will turn fatal. So how do you identify a person who has haze? Swati, it's not too difficult to identify someone who's uh, got haze. It's mm. almost always preceded by symptoms of AMS. Now, if you don't know what AMS is, I think your viewers must uh, see your earlier videos uh, of AMS. You have covered that extensively. But nevertheless, very quickly, you are bound to have a very big headache. That's because fluid has been accumulating in your uh, brain and that's why it's called hey, cerebral edema. There's a swelling in your brain and that happens because of this mm -hmm. fluid getting accumulated uh, in your uh, brain and there's a swelling of the uh, brain. And this results in a headache and not small headache. It's going to be likely to be a big headache and you must you will almost always have a feeling of you know nausea a, a tendency to vomit maybe lightheadedness uh, dizziness uh, extreme uh, fatigue all these things uh, come uh, preceding uh, haze and these are all classic symptoms of AMS so uh, you will have that and it's not very difficult to identify this and are there any advanced symptoms of haze Yes, there is. I just told you what it is going to be proceeding with and what you're likely to notice and you can straight away classify it as haze. Little further on, as haze you know, gets onto you and it catches on you and you're more, um, you know, you're suffering more with haze, you're going to get something called ataxia. Ataxia is nothing but a little bit of coordination, lack of coordination because of the swelling in the brain. And you will almost always find, you know, people talking a little bit uh, incoherently or you know, a, a talking something which is not very sensible. Now I have had cases, for example, there was a lady uh, who, who told uh, us that, you know, uh, please evacuate me by helicopter from here. Uh, who told me, you know, carry me on your back. Mm -hmm. Now, to her, it's perfectly sensible because she knows she's suffering from something and she wants, she has to get out of there in an uh, emergency. But she knows that, you know, we know that, you know, a helicopter rescue is not possible or nobody can actually carry someone who's, who weighs 60, 70 kilos on their back. So these kind of a thing. Now, you must watch out for these things. You must, uh, you must watch out for irritation. You know, they're going to get angry very easily. You know, you tell them and they say, you know what, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, you know. The, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely doing, you know, that, that uh, sense of irritation uh, kind of a thing. The next stage is that if you tell them to walk, on a straight line on the ground, mm. they will not be able to maintain it. They will waver on the ground and th that is a very clear sign of ataxia where, you know, the mind-body coordination is not happening. So, and you know for sure you are in haste, but don't wait for ataxia. Even this kind of uh, conversations that you see, you know, that is a clear sign that, you know, uh, you know, things are not going okay and you are entering into the bad zones of haste. Because if you have come to that ataxia stage, mm. then uh, it's really turned very bad you need to take steps much earlier. Okay, but you said haze kind of climbs onto you very fast and you have very few hours. So once you've recognized haze, your symptoms, what is the next course of action? You have to start taking uh, action immediately, steps immediately. And the best step to take is you must descend. There's no question of staying there or even going ahead. Forget going ahead, even staying there, it's not, it's not an option. Mm -hmm. You have to go down and you have to go down rapidly and you have to go down quite a bit. Now, not all trekkers have this option. You may be in a camp which is, you know, two, three days away or, you know, it's, you are at 13, 14,000 feet and your safe zone, which is likely to be about that eight, 9,000 feet, is about two days away. So what do you do then? 
and that therein is where our trekkers must always mm. carry life saving drugs with them we call them lsds life saving drugs and these are the life saving and they're not many it's about 3 of them but every trekker must carry life saving drugs with them and this will save their lives they may not ever use it on that trek maybe they'll do 10 treks and they will not use it but they must always carry life saving drugs with them and they are very straight they are actually basically uh, we have diamox or acetazolamide mm. uh, we have dexamethasone or we call them dex and nifedipine but in a case of haze you are not going to be using nifedipine so i'm not going to talk much about it these are the only two medications that you need diamox and dexamethasone and this can save your life okay how do you administer them the moment you realize that you have been affected by his whether you have already if whether you're already on a preventive course of diamox whether you're already on it or no take one tablet of diamox immediately and along with that tablet of diamox take 4 mg of dex now dexamethasone or dex in our country come with very small uh, uh, formulations which is 0.5 mg which means you have to take about 8 of these which will give you 4 mg of uh, uh, dexamethasone and take it immediately you take it all at once yes you take it with a uh, water and and along with diamox you will start feeling better within 20 15 20 minutes your swelling in the brain will come down dex will help you to reduce that swelling in your uh, brain and dex is also a kind of a steroid and it will give you a kick it will give you a boost of energy which will give you that window period to get out of there so after you have taken this dex 4 mg of dex start descending but descending may not be easy it's going to take many hours mm. perhaps so repeat 4 mg of dex every 6 hours until you reach an altitude of about 8000 feet where you are going to be absolutely safe okay. once you have reached that altitude and and along with that uh, Uh, 4 mg of dex every 6 hours continue with the diamox of uh, every 6 hours as well so dex and diamox will go hand in hand once you have come down to your an altitude of about 8000 feet then you can start reducing the amount of dex that you take because dex is a steroid you need to wean it off you cannot stop it immediately so with 4 bring it down to 2 after the next 6 hours bring it down to 1 and after 1 you can stop it Okay, and once you uh, descended, is haze going to go away with this medication? Uh, almost always, everyone will completely recover. Mm. But you know the lingering effects of uh, that headache or you know feeling of little vomity or you know nausea will could remain, but you are not in danger. And that will go out. Uh, you know, it will resolve itself in couple of hours, or maybe it may take a day or two. But it's okay. It's not something to worry about. It doesn't require you to get hospitalized or anything. Okay, all right. And if I'm not wrong, this dexamethasone also comes in injections. Do you ever use those? Yes, uh, we would use injection only if you're unconscious. Okay. If you have, you know, because of this cerebral uh, edema, people can even lose consciousness. You may go and get into coma. So if that is the case, then we would immediately uh, plunge uh, a 4 mg or 8 mg dex in you. But I think. Uh, don't get into that that requires a little bit of expert administration especially we can do it when we have been trained to do it mm. but the crucial uh, aspect is to identify haze much earlier before you get it and then descend okay thanks a lot for sharing this with us arjun that was very informative very comprehensive thank you so everybody that was arjun he just told us about haze and how to identify and how to treat it if you're ever stepping into high altitude this is something you must know about because haze can hit anybody and it should not be taken lightly so in my next few episodes we are going to be discussing other kinds of altitude sickness its treatment medication so stay tuned and make sure you hit subscribe <laughs>